So the reality is that the Amazon FBA game has changed and there's some consistent mistakes that I see time and time again that sellers are making. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the five biggest Amazon FBA mistakes that I see brands and sellers doing, but more importantly, what you can do to change them. Let's go. Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to Heist, the YouTube channel that drops videos every single Monday breaking down deep dive topics on how e-commerce and Amazon FBA sellers can improve and scale their businesses. Now look, I've built multiple seven figure Amazon FBA brands and I've been involved in many businesses that have scaled to eight and even nine figures on the channel. And I'm actively selling on Amazon today, which is super important because I've started to see a lot of themes emerging, especially the last six months or so, and how current sellers and current brands are making consistent mistakes on the platform. So let's Let's peel the onion back and dive into these five biggest mistakes that Amazon sellers are making, starting with number one. Now, the first mistake might actually surprise some people, but it's a consistent thing that I'm starting to see in the industry. And that's that people are focused on data first, not the customer first. Don't get me wrong, if you follow this channel for a while or you start to deep dive into the videos, I'm a massive data nerd. I'm all about making predictable decisions using facts, and I'm all about using the analytics and math that exists on the platform to make informed decisions about my business. But it's a very common trend in this industry to look at software platforms and scanning ASINs and finding out what the low risk, high reward products are. Looking at keyword opportunities and seeing where gaps are on keywords. And basically using machines and formulas to make decisions on what products to launch and how to grow and scale your brands. But for me, that's ass backwards. The true value on building a brand that lasts and building offers that customers like in the long term is to actually focus on the customer first. You've gotta understand what segment you're going after. You gotta understand what your brand represents. And you gotta deep dive into the mind of those customers using multiple methods to really uncover the products that they're buying, but more importantly, why they're buying the products that they're buying. Now, where the magic happens if you start with that foundation first is you can then layer in all these data elements, all these analytics to determine the risk reward of your product and to improve the probability of your success. So when we've got a fleet of ideas, when we deeply understand the customer, then we go to the Amazon platform, then we layer in the data, then we understand the math of the products, and that's how you can dramatically improve success on the platform. Starting with data first and scrubbing keywords and scrubbing all the software scrapes and things like that, I think that's a good way to have a short-lived product life cycle, and it's a good way to dramatically reduce the probability of your success launching products on the platform. Most sellers don't realize that it's literally all about the offer. Again, Again, when you take a mathematical approach, when you're in spreadsheets, when you're just working with suppliers, getting a bunch of knickknack samples, you need to really understand coming into it, looking at the first page of Amazon, where is your offer going to reside? What's different about what you're bringing to the table versus everybody else that's highly ranked in organic search? How are you going to supplant existing players that have been in there for two, three, four, five years with a lot more reviews? If you're charging more than what else is on the front page, why would somebody pay that premium and actually purchase your product? Once you answer that question and you can do it convincingly, there's a high degree of probability that you've got a great product on your hands. It makes the launch easier, it makes pay-per-click easier, and it makes a long-term product that's going to stand the test of time a lot more probable. The third biggest mistake I see Amazon sellers making on the platform is that they don't get the math right. You're actually buying inventory, you're shipping inventory, you've got ad costs, people return products. And I think that 95 plus percent of sellers on the platform don't appropriately calculate all all those elements when they make decisions on their products. And the problem is when you don't have enough margins, when you don't have enough cash flow, it becomes a death spiral where you can't afford to buy inventory, you don't have enough margins to sustain a product, and all of the hard work in developing, ordering, planning, shipping is all for naught and you end up having to kill the product. So our key thing that we focus on is ROI. But more importantly than that, taking the net margins that come out of Amazon costs, factory costs, shipping costs, your advertising costs, your return rates and other ancillary costs that can really erode margins. And when you get that ROI to a healthy level, you've got enough cushion to tremendously grow and scale that product. There's more money spitting off so that you can launch new iterations. There's money spitting off so that you can expand into other markets or grow new products. But it's impossible to scale 
if you don't get the math right. And it's a critical problem that I see time and time again, people making on the platform. A dirty little secret of selling physical products via e-commerce or Amazon FBA is that they're asset rich, but they're cash poor. And what I mean by that is as you're growing and scaling, you can literally become a victim of your own success because you've got to order more inventory and the cash drain becomes incredibly important as you're growing and scaling your business. And the stark reality is that most Amazon sellers will not be able to pull money out of their business for two or three years. In my case, when I scaled my first brand to seven plus figures, the first time I took a dollar out of that brand was when I actually sold it. And it was a seven figure exit, which was obviously a life changing moment for me. But I didn't take a dollar out before then because all of the earnings of the business, if you want to grow and scale, need to go back to investing in the brand and business so that you can continue to grow. You've got to delay gratification if you want to grow and scale a physical products e-commerce business. You're building a tremendously valuable asset, but you don't have access to it for years. And in the same vein, you're not going to get those dopamine hits, those rewards, those incentives where you're buying stuff, you're living the life. That comes, but it comes with time. And so for me, it's the people that can put their head down, that can work a day job, that cannot take money at other brands and that can do it day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Those are the ones where there's a tremendous pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And one thing that I've liked to think about in terms of motivating myself when I get through that gritty period when I've got to kind of slug it out for years is that I would rather put in a couple hard years of work so that I can live the life that I want to live forever versus having that dull pain of waking up to an alarm clock, driving to work, slugging it out in meetings and spending 30 years working for companies, living life on someone else's terms, but it takes patience and it takes grit. And frankly, not a lot of people have the appetite or the stomach to do that. And then the fifth common mistake that I see Amazon FBA sellers making is that they go it alone. Now, look, one of the cool things about building these businesses, especially remotely in most cases, is that you can work from a laptop. You don't need to interact a whole lot with people in person. But what comes out of that is a tremendously lonely journey. And even worse than that, if you make mistakes on your own and you kind of go your own path, there's often times where you waste months or even years and definitely a tremendous amount of money making mistakes that other people may have already solved. So my recommendation is, is that you find your people, you find your tribe, find leaders in the industry that you respect and that you trust. Find people that have been there and done it. Find people that are actively selling on the platform and actively finding success. And then also, I think it's really important, something that's helped me a ton is finding other sellers that have a similar value system to me, linking up with them typically on Facebook, jumping on Zoom calls, where you can literally just share what's working. You can share some of your war scars that when you're in a pickle and when you don't know what to do and when you feel like your back's against the wall, you've got people in your camp and corner that can help. You've got people that you can ask questions of that you trust the information that they're giving you. Now, another important layer this too is that you've also got to filter the information, the advice, and the people you get answers from. What maybe worked for somebody in their business two, three years ago, or an Amazon guru that was successful in 2017, or an Amazon guru that has an eight-figure business but really doesn't even know how to operate on Amazon anymore because they've got a big team. You've got to filter that information and take it with a grain of salt and make sure that you take the nuggets that are appropriate for you at this moment in time for your business. So that's it guys, the five biggest mistakes I see people making, and more importantly, some nuggets that you should be able to think about to overcome them and not make those same mistakes too. And I think when you start to piece this stuff together, it's these little things that you add to your repertoire, that you add to your war chest that will make you a more effective brand builder and that will make you more effective on Amazon. So if you like this one, I've actually got a free Amazon FBA masterclass. It's literally the seven secrets and pillars that I use today to grow and scale my Amazon brands to seven plus figures. It's packed with nothing but value. And if you like this video, you'll probably like that video too. But otherwise we drop videos like this every single Monday. If this is your first time here, thank you so much for giving you my time and attention. Dig through my catalog, find some videos. I think you'll find some gems in there that will help you grow and scale your business. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, do all those weird things uh, that the YouTube algorithm likes. And until next time, we'll see you guys. Cheers.